everybody. Um, in New South Wales overnight, we had 18 cases, one of whom was overseas acquired, two of whom were from Victoria, and the vast majority of the rest are uh, from local uh, known clusters. And I'll obviously ask Dr Chant to provide further detail on that. Can I please stress uh, to the community that New South Wales remains in a state of high alert? We know that the rules we've put in place, the strong advice that we've provided works so long as it is applied across the board. Uh, whether it is a school, extra school curricular activity which shouldn't occur, whether it's the recommendation for people to wear masks when they can't guarantee social distancing on public transport or in supermarkets, and whether it's the way in which we've asked businesses to approach a COVID safe environment, compliance is absolutely critical. Now I'm pleased to say that the data we've received through customer or through Service New South Wales has shown us that there has been an increase in the number of businesses complying. There's been an increase uh, in the number of people wearing masks and an increase in overall awareness of what people should be doing. However, I want to see a greater uptake on all those categories. And if we don't see a greater uptake in the next little while, we will consider further measures in which we can increase that uptake. So please know that uh, whilst uh, numbers have remained stable in New South Wales for the past month, we can't be assured of that moving forward. We have to know that our health experts, our contact tracers have been able to do their amazing job because we've currently been able to control the number of clusters and the number of people who've been identified as having the disease. But obviously, cumulatively, when there's a number of unknown sources over a number of weeks, our level of concern increases to make sure that we've captured all of these sources where the disease may be transferring. And this is where we really need the community's help and support. So whether you're a business, whether you're a community sporting organisation, whether you're managing a school, especially a non-government school, you must take the advice from our health experts and our health experts will be reinforcing and have reinforced that advice to non-government schools uh, in the last few days. And Service New South Wales and police will also be continuing to up that <coughs> advice in relation to businesses. But also in terms of our own individual behaviour, please know that if you're in an environment where you can't guarantee social distancing, you should be wearing a mask. Uh, I have done that when I've done my grocery shopping. I have done that when I've walked in a shopping mall. And my expectation is that other people do that as well. And if I were to catch public transport, which I used to and I love doing, I would also be wearing a mask. Now we can't be stronger than that in the advice we're giving. And whilst compliance is increasing and we're really pleased with the way in which the take up has occurred, we need it to go further. Because our concern is those cumul the accumulation of those unknown sources. I also want to stress, um, can we please ask communities in Western Sydney and South Western Sydney, where there has been that higher level of community transmission to please come forward and get tested. And we know for some communities that is not something they're used to doing, but we really need to know that anyone who has the mildest of symptoms or anyone who feels they may have been exposed because a direct contact or a venue they may have visited or a place of worship they may have gone to may have been compromised with exposure. We really need to, people to come forward and get tested. In terms of mask wearing, can we also again reiterate how important it is for people in places of worship to be wearing a mask? Uh, because in places of worship, we know that when people know each other and the health advice and the updates we get tell us that you have a greater chance statistically of getting the virus from somebody you know well, a friend or a contact or someone you see often, rather than a random occurrence. And it's this setting, this familiarity, which sometimes causes complacency, which all of us need to be on top of as well, whether it's a friend, a family member, or somebody we engage with in our day-to-day -day lives. And it's really important to make sure that whether we're attending a place of worship, whether we're attending somewhere where social distancing may be compromised, we have to have that additional line of defence in wearing that mask. 
And I also want to send again a strong message to businesses, especially hospitality venues. The COVID safe plans are there. There is no reason why you shouldn't have already downloaded the plan and registered the plan. Now, if you don't register the plan, we have to assume that you don't have a plan in place. And if we don't see greater compliance, we will need to take further action. So we've given certainly a grace period for businesses, for organisations, for different establishments to step up their COVID safe plans. And if they don't do that, we will have to go that step further. Uh, so I thank everybody for their contribution to date. New South Wales continues to hold the line, but what concerns me, what concerns our experts is over the few weeks that we've been able to hold the line, there has been a, an accumulation of the number of cases which as of as today do not have a direct link the, the vast majority of these are in known settings in Western and Southwestern Sydney, which is why it's really important to have community members in those areas in particular adhere to the advice we've given, but also to step up their rate of testing. Uh, finally, um, I want to make comment and the Minister for Health will expand on this, is that, as you know, um, there were some months when overseas travellers came back to New South Wales when they didn't required to pay for their hotel quarantine, and now they do. Uh, under the circumstances, we want to give a grace period for New South Wales residents returning from Victoria. We feel there are a number of applications for on hardship grounds where New South Wales residents who may have lost a job or been down there for very tragic family circumstances want to come back home. And in order for them to be able to do that in a timely and safe way, uh, for the next month, uh, of course, you still need to do your hotel quarantine, but you won't need to pay for it. We do want to give a month's grace. Not only is that better for people who are facing hardship, but it also means health resources don't have to go into distinguishing those legitimate cases of hardship versus those that don't. We really want to make sure all of our health resources at the moment go into that vital contact tracing. So for returning visitors who come, New South Wales residents coming back from Victoria, who must come back through Sydney. Uh, yes, you do have to do hotel quarantine, that doesn't change, but you won't be required to pay for it. We don't want to see a backlog of people 